20 days until the deepest, darkest days of winter show up. Are you ready? Well, we're getting our gardens ready, and that's what we're going to talk about right here today. All things gardening right here on the Backyard Gardens podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens podcast, where we talk about all things gardening and give the information out for you to be successful in your garden, whether it's your first or your last. We are your hosts, Ben, the backyard gardener, and Batavia, the front yard gardener. One in the country. One in the city. Now get ready as we dig deep into this wonderful world of gardening as we learn to grow and grow for change. Are you ready for the darkest day of the year? I think, is your math, mathing 20 days? December 21st. Oh, so this, people will hear this on like the 8th or 9th of December. So. Oh, shoot. My bad. <laughs> Wrong week. <laughs> you better get ready. Your time you been better get hat. ready because I'm doing math and that's scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh yeah you can do the math so what how many days is that 12 13 something like that something like that yeah so yeah you can blink and miss it yeah it's confusing to me it's confusing to me because it's the darkest day of the year which means in our area that is in mm-hmm. america mm-hmm. we're the farthest away from the sun but it's not the coldest part of the year yet for us not for me either right um i don't put a whole lot of weight or you know focus or concern into like the first day of winter maybe because it's not something that like celebratory is the first day of spring or the first day of summer you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like it's like a sentencing or something it's like <laughs> i'm waiting until spring when i'm paroled like that's the exciting part um so, so yeah, it's you're right. For us, I think it's more like January, February is like the coldest of cold for uh, Chicagoans right. and Midwesterns. Um, yeah, for us, so. it's January. But, you know, I always actually, I do look forward to the solstice to the first day of winter because it's the shortest day of the year. And then from that moment on, we get more and more sun every mm-hmm. day. So that's what I look forward to. The only joy that comes from that for me is I have an old friend. We worked together for a bunch of years, a bunch of years ago. And every now and again, I'll get random. Like, quite literally, I think he is the one that introduced me to the time and date site. He used to always send me like, all right, you have 18 hours of sunlight. You know, it's going to be 16 hours of sunlight. It's got, you know, I might actually down. kill that guy. Oh, yeah. Because so, all I hear is Batavia. <laughs> I have this website, time and date, time and date, time and date. I'm going to text him and ask, you You gave me this site, didn't you? Oh, he's a good guy. <laughs> For other reasons, but yeah, that too. Yeah. So, um, it's, you know, we're getting very close to the, I guess we should call the calendar first day of winter, even though in my mind winter is already here. You know, first mm-hmm. frost marks winter, whatever. Um, you've had your first frost. Oh gosh, I've had multiple frosts. So, can I ask you a question, Freezes. a personal question? Yeah, sure. Your first frost, how cold was it? Uh, we hit right at 32 degrees, which really? would be basically freezing, yeah. So, my first frost was 25 degrees, which is like completely oh, wow. unheard of. Yeah. Wow. I'm like, what is the deal here? What is going on, global warming? But that's a different story. Yeah. So, um, yeah, 25 degrees. By the time this airs, we've gotten down to the low 20s. By the time this airs, we'll probably be like, you know, we got our first frost right on November the 3rd. Um, And between, you know, like within that month, we've probably seen freezing temps around 10 or 11 days because it's, you know what, it's yo-yo season. Who says that? You say that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so we've not gotten into 80 degree weather or anything since it's been dipping, but we've gotten back up to 50s, which is a big difference for your garden. So I have leafy greens that are absolutely frozen, thawing, perking back up, frozen, thawing, perking back up. So... But everything is doing okay? Uh, there are a couple of casualties, but they're okay. I'm I'm giving myself a bit of, you hear me, the, the deep breath, I a, did. a bit of grace. I felt like I, I was going to, I should just lean back and just r- <laughs> go for the ride. Uh, there's some things that are still on my list that, um, that were on my list that, you know, weather killed, 
quite literally. Right. I'm just I'm I'm moving past it. So yeah. So nothing actually died from my weather yet. Because, you know, we, we got down cold a couple of days, but then it's not supposed to get below like 45 for the next week. Mm-hmm. So it's plenty of time for stuff to rebound. But I'm struggling in some areas. Yeah. And I'm also flourishing in some areas. So it's interesting. Mm-hmm. And I also got all my seeds in for next year. Whoa. What do you mean? All of my uh, seed order. They all came. Oh, okay. 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 I thought you meant yeah. like planting seeds. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, no. Yeah, I just went. I'm, I'm going all out. I'm growing my peppers for five months in the house. Uh, I actually, speaking of, um, I need to make sure that I make this confession. I have, I think, two containers, two buckets that have pepper plants in them that are in the garage that have been in the garage since just before the first frost. Um, and. You know, the garage gets cold enough where water can freeze in the coldest part of my winter. Remember, we did that whole test. Yeah. Um, but so far, they're still lively, right? So. What did you say? They're still lively. Oh, I thought you said it's still light skinned. And I was like, what does that uh, mean? <laughs> no. Um, so I also have a container of herbs, which I really believe would have been fine outside, but they're just too beautiful to take the chance. So yeah. I'm like, you know, in the warmer days, you know, high thirties or 40 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm going out to the garage, cutting off some herbs and, you know, they keep well, even if you put them in water in the house. So, um, I'm pretty happy with my garden in its current state, other than it's a fucking mess. Like, I haven't had the strength, the energy, or the warm enough weather to get out there to do my my final cleaning. Right. And I'm not letting it bother me. Trying not to let it bother me. It's not going. It's not going to bother me. Well, let's let's go ahead and recognize the fact that it is December, and you are happy with your garden in December. Yeah. That's two years in a row now. Two years in a row. And have you harvested anything? Or will you be harvesting anything in December? Oh, that's a good question. Um, That is a good question. Yeah. Thank you for asking me, dear sir. Um, So, leafy greens, I'll still have... um, I still have a couple of roots out. I have a container or two with some beets and Mm -hmm. some carrots. So, I'm sure I'll be pulling those out at some point in December. Um, And then I have um, some kale that we're going to rock with it until it just can... It's limp and stays limp until spring. So I'll have that to harvest. And then based on how, what our calendar looks like, I'll be harvesting collards in December. That's good. That's, I mean, that's what you would expect though, when you talk about like fall vegetables going into the last of fall. So did you Um, improve on anything from last year though? You know, because remember, I remember last year you were struggling to get collards in December, which your goal goal was to have collards or have something coming out in December. So that was good. Yeah, I ended up harvesting, I think, the last batch of collards just before Christmas last year, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, But I think what I... I mean, it goes back and we'll talk about this in a few weeks, so I won't steal from that joy. Um, With what I have planted... um, I wouldn't change anything other than, so I did a recent, actually it would have been in November, a harvest of root vegetables. And I let some things just completely overgrow. So I was doing the calculation between days and I'm like 200 days. How am I just, I'm pulling rutabagas out. Wait, no, what? Is that right? And absolutely yeah. it was right. So, um, yeah. And it, there was definitely a difference in kind of the, well, I won't say the health. I had to cut back the leaves, but um, taste a bit. I mean, they were overgrown, plainly put. Um, Your rutabagas? So, yeah, the rutabagas. Yeah, yeah, I had some earlier in the season that were much better. Um, so I have to think about ways to um, plant things I'm going to get to and use sooner. Like we all love the big harvest videos and, you know, and, and pictures and all of that and pulling a bounty of food into the the kitchen, but there's some things that I just didn't harvest early enough. So that's the only thing I would change about kind of coming into fall, I think. Right. Um, and the other thing is I am only harvesting like three types of leafy greens. So it's the chard that I still have, the collards, which it's a whole deal for me to do the collards. I am eating much more kale. So I would have liked more lettuce, but I didn't get a chance to start much of that so here we are 
Yeah, my lettuce was just a shit show this fall. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's it's frustrating. I'm going to have to find a way to kind of overcome the hurdles of the heat and stuff like that because it's like it just constantly bolts. So um, mm-hmm. I do have plans against that, and I'm, I'm almost completely confident it's going to work. I know it's a brave statement, but I think it's just kind of the way to go. But um, let's do this. Let's take this break and then we'll come back and then we'll continue on. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. A lot of y'all asked, how can you help support the Backyard Gardens podcast? Well, we have been busy and we have created a t-shirt line just for the gardener. To visit our shop, go to the link in the show notes and check out the t-shirts and other goodies we have. Now, these are super special t-shirts designed just for the gardener. So enjoy. Thank you for supporting the Backyard Gardens podcast. And we'll see you guys after the harvest. So what I've decided is, and I know you do this and most people do this, is that you cut and come again. Mm-hmm. You know, you cut what you need and you come back in a couple of weeks and you cut some more. Yeah. And I think for lettuce, that's not going to work for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to work. I think I need to just grow it and cut it, grow it and cut it and then just be done. You know, um, it kind of hurts my soul a little bit because mm-hmm. I feel like it's much more efficient to cut and come again. But at the same time, like I spend so much time waiting for it to get to that certain size mm-hmm. that I feel mm-hmm. like I just lose everything. Yeah. Does that yep. make sense? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And we talked about this briefly, I want to say back in the summer, we're, you know, maybe closer to the end of summer. And I wholeheartedly agree with you. I really like plants in the garden. And it speaks, you'll see it in everything I talk about when it comes to planting and harvesting and what's growing. So the rutabaga is the same idea. Like I like to have food out there. Um, and there's that wait, wait, wait. And especially when it's, you know, late spring, summer, even early fall, if you're trying to grow lettuce, for me, you know, you blink and it's bolting. And fortunately, I've had good luck where most of the bolted lettuce is um, not bitter, you know, so that's fine. Um, But then it's the, you got to eat it now. You got to eat it now, right? So I think the cut and come again definitely allows to get more out of that particular plant. However, based on just the the cost of the price of lettuce seeds and how many you get, I think I need to be okay with the idea of I'm pulling a plant and that's all I'm going to get from that plant because I pulled it. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's just, it's tough for me because I've always done cut and come again Mm -hmm. and it works fine for my kale and it works fine for my collars, but that lettuce, man, it does not work out well at all. Yeah. I am. Um, Excuse me. God bless you. I, last year, I started a lot more um, lettuce. Mm -hmm. So I transplanted a lot more lettuce out. And the timing, which I remember still trying to get a handle on, like what fall really looks like. Um, I had some great luck in September and I looked up and I, we had some like unusually warm weather. So some things that I didn't expect to bolt that I finally got to catch, right? They're right. finally growing, ends up bolting. Then we get to the point of like, remember how we go from it's summer, then we start to get cooler, then it's like cold, right? And then we'll get more, a little bit more warmer weather. And so the growing rate for some of the things, I direct sowed a lot of lettuce. And like, you know, like the baby leaves and things. And so I got in September, great results from it. In October, things started to really get cool. And, you know, it's like these things have been growing out for three months. It feels like maybe it's more like two months. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they look like they were just direct sowed, you know, so. But you all know, things considered, you know. Well, you remember uh, a couple months ago, I basically gutted my garden and put all fall stuff in. Mm-hmm, I did. And do you remember I had I had some hesitation about that method. Um, I had never completely just wiped the garden out and then just started over. And by doing that though, I definitely think I made the right move because everything 
is right where it's supposed to be. My broccoli, I'm starting to get heads of broccoli. Oh, good, good. And it's not going to get hot. Like, and now it will not get hot. It's, I mean, you, you, we might get a 70 degree day here or there, but we're not going to get 80s or 90s or anything like that. So it's starting to head up. I have um, cauliflower that's wanting to head up. My cabbage is starting to head up. Like all of these things. I have rutabagas that are like basically done at this point. And it was all because I just, I, I gutted my garden, you know, and yeah. started. And it was really hard to do that because some stuff was still producing, but you know on the other token some things weren't so it worked out but um you know it's being able to do it has been has been very nice to walk out there and it kind of i think it attributes to the success that i've had and you know i've expressed on video and on here that this is one of the best fall gardens i've ever had Mm -hmm. was starting that in august months beforehand Mm -hmm. the trick is now the evolution is to find this happy medium where I can still be getting some food out mm-hmm. while I'm growing other foods for the fall. That's going to yeah, be the because trick. because gutting the garden and then replanting, um, it, the, you're back to a waiting game. Yeah. Right? I mean, because so was two months, I didn't get anything out of it. Yeah. You've gone from, you know, harvesting things every day to wait now it's the i'm waiting weeks and weeks and weeks you know to get the next set of crops yeah i um i mean i have two months to figure out what 2022's approach is going to be and i had a really freeing moment of like making decisions about 2022's garden it's not like this is my forever garden like whatever i do in 2022 i'm gonna have to do forever in in my life you know for gardening it's just what i'm doing in 2022 um because there is a part um, and here is a aha moment and I reserve the right to change my mind in two months and four months and eight months and two years so this <laughs> and you will to, yeah, absolutely I will three years for sure <laughs> uh, so this year's tomato crop so I love 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 uh, for years and years I've gotten green tomatoes off of the plants and like you know right before the first frost right and have had green tomatoes ripen indoors through like now like through december you know early december and it's worked out really well and this year's tomatoes um i got you know pounds and pounds and pounds of tomatoes right um and same idea bring them inside they ripen up but they seem to be like accelerated i think maybe before i had them in the basement which is a little bit cooler until i start Mm -hmm. getting on the heat this year i had them upstairs and so things ripen a lot sooner Mm -hmm. right so i didn't get the satisfaction of like just being able to eat as many ripe tomatoes kind of over the course of weeks um and then also i absolutely noticed a difference in flavor um as they went from green tomatoes off the vine ripening indoors now this is the trick though I, I'm struggling with now thinking back to see was this tomato ever the tastiest? Was it just a year or was, was this particular variety just wasn't that great, right? Like I have at least one variety, which I can't place now, which is another conversation, that's like a store bought tomato. Now, the benefit is I don't have to buy them from the store, but it tastes like a store bought tomato, right? right? Um, so I'm not going to change everything up based on that, but it does have me thinking. So this is the aha moment. Um, it's back to the whole, you know, what Ben's mission is, is to get me to grow less tomatoes. <laughs> the, the, or, this, or step one in his 12-step plan. Don't wait, put step, it on me. Step one in his 12-step plan is to get me to pull tomatoes out of the garden sooner. And then the ultimate goal, like the end game, is to have a tomato-less garden. Like that's that's the win for him. <laughs> that's like, my goal. That's I my know. goal. Yeah. No tomatoes um, for Batavia in 2000 and whatever. <laughs> But if I could get my act together when it comes to preserving, which I don't have yet, if I could get my act together for that, then I wouldn't need as much time. God bless you. I wouldn't need as much time like to grow tomatoes. So let tomatoes grow in the garden. Are you tracking with me? Yeah, I'm tracking. Yeah. Between so, my sinuses and everything else, I'm tracking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, just hold on. Hold on. Stay with us. I still have like 10 more things to talk about. You got to stay here and listen. <laughs> <laughs> You see what happened? There? Yeah, I see um, what happened. 
But anyway, my point is that if I could, it's helpful to still have tomatoes growing from like, you know, July, late July harvesting through, um, you know, October. That's helpful because it gives me time to basically manage that harvest. Yeah. Right. Um, however, if I condense that timeline, meaning I'm pulling tomato plants out earlier. So let's say you know, mid-September. That's like a month and a half earlier than I normally would. The one we talked about, it gives me an opportunity to put something else in its place for fall. Like that's the, a sweet spot, right? Right. Um, but then that means that my growing time for tomatoes has been condensed and I'm going to have more tomatoes off the plant a lot earlier. You right. You know what I'm saying? And so you got to do something with those. Um, so anywho, that's a, a part of what I'm considering like these next couple of months. I think it's a I good I, start starting seeds. I mean, when I sit back and I look at how my year unfolded as far as, you know, preserving and stuff like that, it's, it's the same thing. I need to be more efficient at it. Like you are Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. or like you said, you want to be. Um, and what I need to really do is just say, it comes out. If I want to preserve it, I preserve it that day and just have the discipline to do it. Now, the truth is there's a lot of other things going on that don't allow me to do that, such as Mm -hmm. this. But um, in a perfect world, that's exactly what I would do is say, okay, I got a pile of tomatoes. Boom. Let's get them out, you know? Yeah. And honestly, I think, um, are you sitting down? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I can see you're sitting down. That was just for dramatic effect. Minutes, I'm going to be laying down. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, like I had three main producing tomato plants this year. And part of the issue that I had was I was pulling tomatoes and I didn't have enough to preserve at once Mm -hmm. to make a full pot. So really the situation is I need more tomato plants. Mm -hmm. So when I get that influx, I will have enough to just be like, okay, let's go, let's go can it and be done. Yeah. You know, and also have enough spread out over my garden in different sections to where when, you know, because where my tomatoes were this year, that bed will typically get less sun earlier because of the way it's positioned. If I grew tomatoes there, then I could just rip them out and be like, okay, it's done. I still have tomatoes in this other section and then do you it like what? that. If you grew more tomatoes, <laughs> in all seriousness, like that's, that's, um, and I was thinking about mentioning it, but I complained about this so much. I decided not to bless this episode with this complaint but since you brought it up here we are um that that quantity thing right so it's the same i mean i could it's just like it was yesterday you know starting to see the first tomatoes blush in july you know and then starting to get some a few here and there but it's like going into september before i'm getting what i would look at and say okay this is enough to process right and this is the, the balance i'm hoping to to you know relax related release over these next couple of months and figure it out because it's all undue pressure because it becomes this whole thing like now i I need to wait until i get pounds of tomatoes to be able to process them which is a trick i do i have heard people just dump them in the freezer get a couple at a time dump them in the freezer dump them in the freezer a lot of things you're going to do with them it's not going to matter that you know they're they're frozen then they thaw or whatever so that's something to consider um take them out let them thaw and then process them yeah i'm Um, not going to do that just for the record like I, it's not my thing but that is an idea for some others that may be running into the same trouble right um but i really do believe which you know a part of it's kind of fun too because it's a new um goal being a couple of years into starting seeds for me being a couple of years into preserving food um figuring out that timing and because i love a good project i tend to make that kind of thing a good project like once i pull out the, the canner now That's we're ready it, to boy. rock and roll right yeah. you know it's going to be days and days of it um and then it just takes me a, a while to jump over that hump if you will yeah no i feel you completely and it's the same thing i mean it was like this year we went and we picked blueberries at a farm and we brought them back and canned them and I mean, dude, I had like 15 quarts of blueberries and I still mm-hmm. waited a week to can them. Mm-hmm. Like, what the hell am yeah. I waiting for? You know what I mean? Yeah, I had better. I had worse luck with my peppers this year, waiting a long time to process yeah. those more so than tomatoes. Yeah, because um, tomatoes give you or peppers give you a little bit more leeway. 
you know, but I mean, we're literally pulling fresh food out of our gardens and then, you know, I'm letting it sit. Well, so. that's what happened to me is I went out there and I was like, all right, I'm going to pull my jalapenos for the year. And I pulled 75 jalapenos off my plants. I had just let them sit. Wasn't yeah. even worried about them. I was like, whatever, do what you're going to do. Like I, th- I figured it was done. They were loaded. They were all like touching the ground uh-huh, and uh-huh. there's only two plants. So I that's took them wild. and I was like, all right. So I, I cut them and I said, David, you know, he's like, yes, daddy. I said, you want to help me uh, clear off? He's like, of course, daddy, I'll do anything. So we're sitting there and we're pulling off jalapenos and we leave them on the back porch in a pile. And I was just going to leave them there for a little bit. I left them there for two days in the middle of the mm-hmm. back porch. Then I brought them inside and I left them inside for like two weeks before I decided to actually yeah. can them. And when I was canning them, I was like, okay, this is really close. Like, yeah, they're, they're really starting to turn here. Like you, mm-hmm. you're messing up. So yeah. And a part of that, too, for me and that scenario is it's the end of the year. There was going to mm-hmm. be nothing else to can, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, so I was like, what's the rush, whatever. But it was really important to me because I didn't have any canned jalapenos to get me through the next year. Now I have four cans of jalapenos that should last me through the year yeah. with, you know, until the fresh ones start coming off again. But so when you um, kind of I know you go through iterations of your garden design. Do you have like... <laughs> That's such a polite way to say it. <laughs> um, you left out the obsessed part. You left mm-hmm, out the panic. Mm-hmm. You, okay, good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. And then the complete tossing it, you know, and saying to hell with it. Um, do you do something similar as far as a plan for um, your pr- uh, preserving? Or do you just know in your head what you all like and what you, you know, you need more jars of? Wait, you mean like what we're going to plan to preserve for the year? Yeah. So do you have like, you know, I mean, I know that there's the, you're planting knowing that you want to preserve X. I know, I know that, but I'm saying like, um, a part when you said it was the last of the peppers, I did that with sweet peppers. It was kind of like, I had a hard time seeing like how many peppers I really had left on the plants before I pulled them. And I said, well, let me just wait to pull them all. And then once I see what I have, how much I have, then I'll decide kind of how I want to eat and how I want to preserve them. But that was a bad move, right? Because then I ended up with so many mixtures of ripe versus not ripe. And I let them sit. And now basically I mentioned this before, everything is kind of crinkly, which again, you still mean absolutely usable. I made this great pasta dish yesterday and I had like completely crinky, crinkly um, bell peppers, added them to the dish. I roasted them in the oven, added them to the dish and delicious. They're fine. Yeah. You're, you're, but you're steps away from losing that pepper. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, so it's, it's interesting you asked that, and this is a whole new thing, um, we can talk about in the future, but yeah, I definitely know like, Hey, we want to get a little bit more of this in the pantry. We want a little bit of this, Mm -hmm. a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. But then what will also happen is we'll also have stuff left over. Mm -hmm. So we'll have stuff that kind of compiles year after year. And so we, you know, we need to be aware of that. And I try and can everything a certain way once and then try it and then make a decision for the next year. Mm -hmm. So we like, um, Last year, so the f- two years ago, we when we had all the butternut squash coming up, we canned mm-hmm. butternut squash. Um, interestingly enough, they didn't seal, even though I checked them, mm-hmm. and they rotted in my pantry. So I took that as an omen and said, I'm not canning those anymore. It's kind of a bitch to can them, too. Yeah. Um, and then we did carrots this year. So, like, just chopped up carrots whole. Mm-hmm. So we're going to ch- we're gonna try those out and see if we like them. But... You know, we have our staples that we like to have canned and frozen and stuff. And then we just kind of, if we can get more, great. And if it also goes off of how much we have left over. So, Mm -hmm. like, right now we have blueberry and strawberry jams. And they should last us for a fair amount of time. We'll probably run out, I would say, March. We'll probably run out of our jams completely. Maybe Mm -hmm. April. And then, like, our tomatoes... We should be good for the year with tomatoes because we also supplement those with stuff from the grocery store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's always that as well. Um, Spaghetti sauce. We, I mean, hell, my wife used it all up already. I'm like, what are you doing? You know, make it last, but whatever. So I think we have like one more can of that. So if you look at that, then it's like, okay, next year we really need to focus on making more spaghetti sauce, Mm -hmm. which means we need more tomatoes for that. So 
Yeah, we do definitely do that, but it just depends on how much we consume it. So, and it's yep. such a learning process too, mm-hmm. because I can't tell what they will or won't curve. like. Yeah, definitely is a learning curve, and um, I there are a couple of things that I enjoy. Like if I have it out, like at a restaurant or something, then I try it. And it's kind of like, mm. so they're definitely using a different recipe. I tried pickled uh, cauliflower this year Mm -hmm. and um i'd gotten like you know some order from takeout from some mexican restaurant and you know i love pickled jalapenos right and so they had given me the little bitty container and it had mostly cauliflower i'm like oh this is great and so i'm like oh and i bought the cauliflower from the store i'm like oh i'll pickle it and so i came back maybe a month and a half later and um tried it i'm like yeah, this is very vinegary. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like I followed the directions, you know, this is the like, okay, so now this is what's safe. And I'm like, that ain't the taste I'm going for. Uh, but anyway, I, I think it's, um, it definitely is that whole, what I really enjoy versus trying to try something new. Same thing with growing food, you know? Yeah. So, um, I was just curious, by the way, I made my first ever ho- homemade pizza. Like, I mean, I bought the dough, but right. I made my first ever homemade pizza using, some ingredients for my garden, including the sauce, which is pretty Dude, that's cool. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, homemade pizza is amazing. Yeah. Do you yeah, have a, you don't have a bread maker, do you? No, I do not. Do I'm not top nope. one of the top five things to get if you start making nope. your own bread. Nope. Best. Yeah. I um I'm going through this whole uh, reorganization project. I'm in year four of it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say something like that. I was just waiting. <laughs> this year's version is... Remember, shit. I'm not even going to go back and recount. It absolutely is your form. Um, so this year's version uh, had me move all of the food products out of... Um, it's basically this little closet that's off my back door, but it's right across from a bathroom. And so I made it into like this little pantry. I know a pantry technically is something you walk into, but whatever. So I'd had food and things stored there, like canned goods and things, you know, dry goods stored there. And I never really liked the idea of coming out of this bathroom and like basically the behind this door is food. Never mm-hmm. really floated my boat. But it also allowed things to hide from me, right? So right. I have now moved all of my kind of appliances there, which I like much better from the look, the feel. Yeah. There's so many pots and pans and, you know, food processors and blenders and all this crap. And I'm just like, I will buy something else when something stops working because I have no more room to store it. Right. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I don't have room for a bread maker. Sorry. Well, you know what we do is we go through and uh, with those things. And if we don't use it often, we get rid of it. Like we don't because mm-hmm. I mean, those you can get appliances out the wazoo. Yeah. And so we, we kind of, you know, and but bread maker we use a lot. But I digress. I got to tell you something. I put up my low tunnel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it seems to be doing okay. We'll see. I have plans for it. So it was funny when you said, uh, you know, when you do your first couple versions of your garden, like that totally made me like because I made a low tunnel, I had to completely throw out my entire garden plan for the next year and restart because it allows me to do other things inside of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's very interesting. Um We'll see how it goes. I didn't put super thick plastic on it, but I don't think mm-hmm. I need super thick. Mm-hmm. Does that yeah. make sense? No. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So. I, um, at this point, it's le- because of what I have still in the garden, it's less about protecting those uh, vegetables now. I mean, I do have taken some steps. There are a couple of videos out there for me where I've like, you know, basically I've covered this, you know, a lot of towels and plastic and all of that. But it's more so getting a head start on next year's garden, which we'll talk more about next year. Um, So, you know, low tunnels and all are going to be important to my next year's spring garden, I think. Yeah. Um, But yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do a video on it um, just to say I have. But (laughs) and that was one of the things I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't because it's so late in the year. But then I'm like, well, it's perfect for spring mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. that's really like when it comes down to it, that's 
honestly why I set it up. And if it works out good, I'll add more to my space completely. It's kind of a bitch to get in and out of, though. I will say that. Like, I'm not. Yeah, that's the the real. I'm downside. not a big fan of that situation at all. But securing the plastic in the way that you and I are using them with the uh, PVC pipes for hoops, mm-hmm. right? You're using. Are you using PVC pipes, or did you mm-hmm. use the? Hell yeah, okay. I'm using whatever's yeah. cheap. So and absolutely is very cost effective. Um, so you, it's a pain. It basically keeps my vegetables locked away. And I was in the kitchen um, a couple of mornings ago, and I saw plastic blowing in the wind. I'm like, well, I screwed the pooch on that. Like I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how it was for me. The first, like, because we weren't supposed to get a frost, and then the first frost was 25, and I was like, well, I've mm-hmm. got to cover this. So I went out there and I, I hooked it up and I was like, I couldn't even find plastic. Like there's no plastic around. Yeah. So I actually ordered six millimeter online and I ended up going to my local Home Depot or uh-huh. Lowe's, whatever, and getting like a three and a half mil. And I was just like, look, I'm just going to drape it on right now. Like whatever, just, mm-hmm. you know, and everything's fine. I mean, you go out there now and it doesn't even look like I don't, I may not have even needed to cover it, but when it comes down to it, we had talked. I don't know if we talked on the show or if we had talked off air about it. Um, where I was talking about um, starting seedlings in and basically putting them out when it's still freezing for some stuff like cabbage and stuff like that. Yeah, that was and off the, air. <laughs> that was off air? Okay. Yeah, that's what my log says. Yeah. Okay. So uh, maybe it's, <laughs> it is. But either way, so that's what it. In my area in February, it says that you can plan out like a number of vegetables. So it's like cabbage, kale, broccoli, cauliflower, all that stuff happens within like the first week of February to Mm -hmm. the second week of March. And that being said, like my whole problem is, well, if I start it inside and then I go to harden it off, it's going to die because it's, Mm -hmm. you know. And so as I was reading up on it, which this is not easy information to find, may I add. It was, you start them in a cold frame mm-hmm. and then you plant them out. And I'm like, oh, why didn't I think of that? So that's the idea with this low tunnel is that so it's like I can plant my carrots earlier. Mm-hmm. I can do all these things and kind of maybe see if it'll get a jump start. And this year I have one low tunnel to see if it's a test. So, you know, if it works out great, awesome. And if it doesn't, mm-hmm. screw it. You know, I've got a little bit extra plastic. I'll, I'll cover stuff with it in the spring or something like that. Yeah. You know, it's not a big deal. Yeah. With a home, there's always a need for plastic. Yeah. A wise yeah. person once said. Well, you know, and if some, never mind. <laughs> you could wrap yeah. things up and get disposed of them, I guess. But I didn't it's want so everybody to think. sad that I absolutely was thinking that. But I, I binged on a lot of like toxic TV this weekend. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. The disposal of things was right at the top of my my cue list. Um, so, as a shout out to all of my indoor plant lovers, just to note, I am back on like the triage of my indoor plants. Um, there are some things that um, that are in hospice, and there are some things that you know have flourished without my attention, and there are some things that are in between. So um, I am not going to do a big uh, plant purchase like I've done the previous winters. Um, I got enough going on here right now. So I am going to be nursing some things back to health. Oh, Lord. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I left um, my one indoor plant outside and it got frozen. So toast. But, you know, it happens. Mm -hmm. I ended up getting a Christmas cactus, too. So we'll see if I can keep that one alive. Oh, my house my. gets no sun whatsoever, so. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it's tough, but there's things that I can do. But, um, you know, anything that we're doing that I do in my garden or my yard or anything, I always try to have it like multi-purpose. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to figure out how I can use, you know, the low tunnels for multi-purpose, like different, yeah. you know, I just. I haven't figured that piece of the puzzle out. Is the space you have them, could that be the space you plant um, squash next year and cover it? That's what I'm trying to decide on, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and as of right now, also, I mean, it's easy to move. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you can move it. And it doesn't take, but I was surprised at how little time it took to set it up. 
Yeah, I definitely, there are a few beds in the backyard garden that I um, just move the hoops around, you know, back and forth. Uh, I'm trying trying to decide for the winter. So the, the cheat for next year, so let me jump ahead. I am going to cover some beds. They're like 17, 16, 17 raised beds now. Um, shout out to Ashley, which by her account, there would be 999 based on what how we normally communicate about this. Yeah. Uh, but um, I'm not going to cover all of them. I'm very much taking your approach. I think I had one covered in plastic last year because I had some containers inside of the bed. Mm-hmm. And remember I, I told you that the soil inside of that bed was workable much earlier than the rest of the soil in the raised beds that were uncovered. Right. right? So it was still frozen. I don't remember the timing of it, but I want to extend, I want to do that on purpose you know, coming into this winter where I'm going to pick out a couple of beds that I'm going to cover with plastic for the winter, not to grow in over winter necessarily, but to kind of protect it from the freezing temps. And when I say that, it means like it's not going to be completely thawed underneath, but it should thaw out earlier in the spring than the rest of the beds. Right. So I'm going to pick a couple of those and it needs to tie into, and I still have a bit of time to do that. It needs to tie into um, the beds that I plan on planting in early next spring. So we may be venturing into the front yard for that because one of my good friends told me like to, to create a, um, a sundial years and years ago, like monitor how much sun is, you know, coming into your garden. I'm like, I ain't doing all of that shit, you know? So, this year I created a sundial. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I definitely did. I was much more in tune with just I me. Mean, it seems pretty obvious when I say it now, but how much more sun the front yard garden gets this time of year compared to the backyard garden. Yeah. Right. And that's going to be this way for quite a while. Um, so I need to take advantage of that. You know, so when we talk about the spring last spring, spring of 2021 most of the things i planted were in the backyard which they did fine but if i want to get a head start if i want to basically get spring in rotate it move on to summer i need to like plot out those areas so the plan is and this is the plan because again i'm still tired right <laughs> you know, so, yeah uh, well it seems like it's just a little bit of work which technically it is um I need to pinpoint a time before the snow really comes down. That's also another key. I really, I don't have to get to it before the snow hits, but I want to get to this before the snow gets heavy. Um, so anywho, that's something that, you know, kind of my close out activities for the year is something that I like to do. I am so blessed that I don't have to deal with snow anymore. Cause I remember that feeling of like, all right, the snow's coming. And when it comes, that's it. Like you have a definite, like cut off timeline that like, that's it. It's over. And I can, you know, because right now, like, as you're talking, I'm like, okay, because, you know, when you were saying, like, the front yard gets more sun this time of year, like, I was looking at the wild garden, Mm -hmm. and two things, I thought, you remember how I said, like, always, like, I get sunlight issues there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, now I'm not so sure that it's sunlight issues and not just soil issues that are, like, hindering some plants, but because it gets a lot more sun this time of year or gets sun earlier which is super important when it's, you know, cool out. But, um, I was just thinking to myself, like I need, you know, I need to go out there. I need to build those beds out there, blah, blah, blah. But I don't have a time frame. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my time frame is really, you know, March before I need to get, now I, I hopefully I'll get it done. And I usually about after the Christmas season, everything, I start to get super antsy. Yeah, and then yeah. I'll just go out there in January and start knocking out projects. So um, that's definitely probably going to happen in January. But at least I don't have to really worry. And if we do get snow in two days, it'll be gone. Mm-hmm. So I'm yeah, super for, blessed. Yeah. I mean, the face that I had, I could see myself here. I know. It, it, oh, that was not, not it cute. Hurt. But I felt every bit of the face I was giving. Yeah. Um, because I had images of, you know, again, I've lived in Chicago all of my life. I, I am on this episode. I will not be the one that complains about the weather and the place she's chosen to live in. Yeah. Not on, not on this episode, um, but it's not the snow flurries. It's not the couple of inches of snow. For me, historically, it's always been that period of it snows on top of snow on top of snow. So yeah. then you're waiting until the snow melts. So this is move forward to like February, March, and you start to see the edges of the, the grass, you know, but there's still like a lump of dirty gray snow. Yeah. You know? uh, so that's the part that I, I look forward to the least. 
I mean, when I was in Massachusetts, it was the same thing. You know, it was like up from January, from like the end of January all the way to March was nothing but snow after snow Mm -hmm. after snow. And that was it. But, um, yeah, but you know, you say you're not going to complain about it, which is, I think is good first of all. But, um, I think you just, you find ways to embrace it, you know? And I think that's where my philosophy is like, take it easy in the winter chill. I think it came from that because you didn't have a choice. You know, something that I realized just recently, but I've pretty typically done. I remember how I said that I, I felt like I had a chance to stop and enjoy the food from the garden, like yeah. really enjoy it. It's less about the garden work that's keeping me from it. It's more about, I just prefer to cook. I cook more when it's cold and I'm kind of shut in, you know, than I do in the summer. Right. right. I'll grab something really quickly or it'll be something I eat really light. Like I'm not making, you know, six course meals in the summer. Um, and so that's important because it also impacts what I grow. Right. Which I didn't realize until this, like until very, very recently, like these last couple of weeks. Um, but it's a good thing. It's a good kind of moment for me to say, Oh, okay. Okay. So I really want vegetables that are coming out of the garden in, you know, October going into November and then, you know, kind of earlier spring because I'm really in the mode in the mood to manage them, cook with them, prepare them, enjoy them. Right. You know, um, obviously summer for me, just in general in life beyond the garden is much busier. Right. You know, so it's kind of like you're taming the wilderness, you know, in the garden. Um so that's a whole, I don't, I'm not going to steal from that joy of next year when we talk about our plans. Yeah. Don't do that yet. Don't do that yet. Yeah. Let's give but it, let's give it a break. Just those words will impact what 2022 <laughs> looks like. Leonard <laughs> will roll the tape next year when it's, when it's time. Roll the tape. Um, no one ever says it that way. I'm not sure why I chose to, but I think I that like everybody it. should say it that way. It's great. Uh, uh, roll the tape. I can't get I my voice as loud as you or as high. <laughs> uh, look, we we're sitting here talking and I almost forgot it is time for recipe? somebody. I don't know who's your, who's week is it? I don't know. We're at rock, paper, scissor it. All right. Let's rock, paper, scissor it. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors says shoot. Damn. Rock, paper, scissors says shoot. Ah, All right. Got it. <laughs> so we'll be right back with the recipe of the day. One of the most common questions we get asked is what do we use in our gardens as far as products? Well, we have an Amazon list below that if you go to, you can see all of the products that we use and like and recommend and you can buy them. And if you do, you support the podcast at no extra cost to you. So check out the link below for our Amazon store and help support the podcast and enjoy your gardens. All right, so we're going to make this brief. Um, We're just going to do one more bit of kale because we can. It's still in my garden. I'm still growing it. Uh, So this is untraditional for me. It's a kale Caesar salad. Um, So, yeah, uh uh uh-huh. Any kind of kale will do. I'm using curly kale, and my tone just changed because I know the the guy on the (laughs) other side of this microphone is all like... Tuscan, Toscano, you know, Tanzania. You know. Hey, you know, <laughs> we all have our preferences. Um, I've mentioned a bunch of times I actually enjoy salads in the winter. So um, while it is a bit colder, this still warms my heart. So you're going to start off with a handful, five or six for a single person, leaves of lettuce. Um, chop them very, very finely. Um, I'm not going to massage them or anything. I'm going to focus on cucumbers if you have purchased them. If not, don't worry about it. Croutons, which I also made uh, for the first time. I can't believe I've been buying croutons all of these years. I mean, it's the easiest thing ever to make. Uh, And there are a lot of calories because I basically ate a lot of bread with olive oil before I put them in the oven. But anyway, so cut the kale up finely. Get some croutons, store-bought or made. Something crunchy is what I like. That's the reason why I leaned on the cucumbers. Um, Some type of creamy dressing. So Caesar is my choice. Um, But you want that thick. Add a little bit of avocado to it. 
make it a little bit creamier, uh, salt and pepper to taste, and that's it. I'm not doing anything special. It's super easy. No. Caesar kale salad. Yeah. I would... I uh, actually, I went out to eat the other night and I had that, um, for some reason, the restaurant we went to had that, but I also put a piece of salmon on top. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hard boiled eggs. That's the piece I forgot. Hard boiled eggs? eggs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A couple of eggs in there. Get you some protein in there as well. It's good stuff. There it is. There mm-hmm. it is. I love, I love Caesar salad. So Have it for breakfast, breakfast as well. Break the rules. You know what? I might do that just for you. In might my be mind, part of the hard my New Year's resolution. Egg makes it breakfast worthy. Sure, why not? <laughs> Live your best life, Batavia. So I'm kind of making um, up that last part, though. Just so you yeah. Know. So I think this episode is a mixed bag because there's a lot going on in our gardens at the very end of the year. Mm-hmm. But which is super cool, man. I have really been gardening for years with the hope of this to be able to talk. Well, I mean, I do enjoy a good break, you know, some downtime, but I've really wanted to be in November and December harvesting food for my garden. So this is, again, I think we said year two or three of being able to do that. Um, Let me ask you something before we, we wrap up. Ask away. So this is a slower time in the garden for you, right? Yeah. Even with your spectacular fall garden and his fall garden is the fall garden of dreams, right? (laughs) It's like really, really impressive. Job well done. But summer is a bit more and spring is a bit more challenging, more work. I really feel like gardening is a hobby now. In this particular time versus four months ago, three months ago, it really felt like a job. Yeah. And not in a negative way. So my question is, if let's pretend if you could get the amount of food that you desired, right? Would you prefer to have this version of your garden and kind of how you interact with it now, November, December, or do you really want to be in the thick of it in May, June, July. May, June, July. Okay. Why? I like being out there. I like being busy. I like troubleshooting. Uh, I mean, that's really one of the main reasons why I I like to garden so much is because it's always something. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I might complain about it, but when it comes down to it, like I like, what's that bug? How can I get rid of that? Why is this not producing? Why in the hell am I getting 452,000 tomatoes all at once? Like... (laughs) Why did my jalapenos give me 75 jalapenos at all at the end of the year? Why is it that every year my pepper plants get productive at the end? That's, I like that kind of stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I like, and I, I also like the heat, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a big part of it for me, too. You know, my big thing this year, um, as I'm trying to crack the code for watering for next year, you know, I think I need to, I need to make some adjustments and, um, So that's, you know, but I like that stuff. What about Mm -hmm, you? mm -hmm. You like the load downtime, don't you? If I had to choose one or the other, I would choose um, the earlier part of the year, right? If I could only have one. The reason why I like the downtime is because of how taxing the earlier part of the year is. Yeah. Right. You know, um, but I would also choose your May and your June, July and primarily because um, I get to spend much more time based on where I live, much more time in the garden. And it's really a a place I enjoy. But if I had to choose one reason, it's how much the garden changes over those months versus September, October, November, for example. Right. It changes in those months, but it really is a, you know, it's kind of downward slope. Right. Yeah. I feel Uh, you. So, so yeah, it's, um, everything that I want the garden to be kind of, you know, uh, more, you know, spiritually, if you will, happens in those kind of summer months. Right. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, I think also if it comes down to summer or winter garden uh, or fall, whatever spring, um, you know, if you ask me which one I prefer, I prefer the food. Oh, man, that's tough. Oh, I wish you wouldn't have asked this question. I don't think I am. I think I'm going to pull back. I'm going to pull back. (laughs) 
because it's just uh, it's too much. I, I think I just need to to give it a rest because mm-hmm. um, that's a tough question. And oh, that's no, it's, an, it's it's not a tough question for me, but I'm not ready to face the answer. Yeah, it's it's not a tough question um, for me. It's a long answer for me because <laughs> gotcha. it's actually pretty in depth. But um, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that. So, this Leonard, new 2022 episode activated. He mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got it. He's he's writing it down right now. <laughs> that's right. Because if Leonard doesn't write, he's fired. That's how it works. We, he doesn't. He's not allowed to type. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard is like did you ever used to watch Murphy Brown when she used oh, to fire man, way a back in the day secretary like every show yeah it's like Leonard gets fired every show <laughs> we still and love he's him, his though. own replacement yeah <laughs> but um you know it's this was I guess this year we we brought back our garden updates in the spring mm-hmm. and we didn't really do anything you know we didn't name them garden updates, mm-hmm. but within these conversations, I feel like there is so much useful information. So, um, you know, as we go through to, we'll call it our rest period of the year for our gardens, um, these conversations, I don't an- anticipate them totally changing. I mean, yeah. we'll have different topics, but there's still like these garden talk sessions are so important because we really flesh out a lot of different things. I think. How many times in the last six weeks have one of us said, you know, somebody needs to press the record button. We need to be recording this conversation we're having. Jesus. So many times it's ridiculous. <laughs> one day I'm going to record our conversation on the <laughs> phone. No, because then I can get sued or something probably. <laughs> I don't know. Is there laws against that? Uh, as long as you edit out the times that I have to put you on hold to go to the bathroom or to, you know, to yeah. shoot a cat away or to answer the door for a neighbor or something. <laughs> as long as you edit that part out, I'd be okay with it. But everybody, um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. You know, we have a lot going on in our gardens. It's such a quiet time of year. It's, it's amazing to me. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing to me that Batavia has so much going on in her garden. Because she is literally, literally, almost five miles away from the Arctic Circle. So, <laughs> it's cold up there. Okay? <laughs> but um, thank you so much for listening. Check out all of our links below. Amazon stores. Become a patron. Help us out to keep this show going. And until next time. See ya. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you want to see what we're up to or just stay up to date on all the announcements regarding the show or anything gardening, then you can follow us on Instagram at Backyard Gardens TV. We love seeing what you guys are doing. So use hashtag BYG podcast in your post and we'll be sharing your gardens with the Backyard Gardens community. And check us out on YouTube at Backyard Gardens where we will post this show, all of our other shows, clips, and then also some gardening tips and just gardening entertainment. And you can see us at our website at BackyardGardensTV.com. But that's it for today's show. So help us as we learn to grow and grow from change. And until next time, we'll catch you guys later. We'll call this one a wrap. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. 